Welcome to Global Information Security Society for the Professional of Pakistan. Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. I welcome you all again on behalf of uh, Global Information Security Society for Professionals of Pakistan. As you know that we have been carrying out these sessions to aid you in preparation for a CRS examination. Uh, CRS exam has a total of four domains. The three domains were already covered earlier and now we are left with the last domain which is on risk and control monitoring and reporting. Before we begin, I would just like to give a brief intro about myself. I have been working largely in the telecommunication sector and uh, in the financial sector as well. Currently, I am linked with one of the reputed banks in Saudi Arabia as information security consultant. Uh, below is the profile for, for below is my LinkedIn profile details. You can go and check out my credentials over there and if you have any questions or uh, anything to communicate with me you can contact me over LinkedIn I'll be more than happy to, con uh, to help you out in any way I can so without wasting any further time let's begin the session and jump to the topic directly so let's begin uh, now we had discussed earlier also that uh, this management is an ongoing and, and a cyclical process and it is evident uh, that the process of risk management does not uh, the, does not uh, terminate at the end of uh, the phase of uh, risk and control monitoring and reporting. Instead, the organization relies on its monitoring and reporting functions to identify risk for further assessment and mitigation. Now, as the risk responses are implemented of uh, implemented uh, in, in the form of various controls, which are uh, ranging from administrative, technical, or physical controls, then begins the phase for monitoring and reporting of those controls to ascertain that the risk levels are within their thresholds and the risk heat map is not erupting. So, keeping all this in view, we, we need to establish a mechanism where management is alerted prior to any materialization of risk that can impact the business in any way. And Again, th th this is not just about business. Any sane human being's mind operates in the same manner. So, if you are a journey, if you are on a journey, so how do you determine, or how can you tell whether you are moving towards or away from your destination? In, in the physical world, we, we use uh, all kinds of environmental cues, such as road signs, landmarks. So, these are the indicators that tell us where we are headed. When it comes to business or the corporate world, you have indicators too, which can be in the form of KRI or KPI. So yeah, these indicators help the management to keep them abreast of the situation. So what is the objective of a risk reporting? So the first thing is that it provides the risk owner with the information to initiate the risk response. So you see, the risk owners are accountable for properly managing any given risk to an acceptable level. So therefore, risk owners should be informed when they have to initiate a risk response. And how do they get to know about this? They, they get to know about this through the risk reporting. Uh, then uh, risk reporting is also done to meet the regulatory and the compliance requirements. And Again, it, it helps to inform the risk owner and the management of the results of the assessments uh, and, and the actions which may be required. I mean, it, it helps to uh, it helps them stay informed of the emerging threats and what are the uh, what is the status of the existing controls. And then, uh, although risk reporting itself does not mitigate the risk, but it can become a basis for risk mitigation because once you know. Uh, that a certain risk is being elevated or, or is burning on the risk heat map. So you can go and you can check that particular uh, risk and see if it requires any kind of a risk mitigation or, or uh, some other risk response. So what are the indicators that we use to uh, in the risk reporting? They are key risk indicators, KRIs, tell us where we are today in relation to our risk appetite by measuring the risk levels. 
how the how to care i support various aspects of the risk management this is something that we can see over here the first thing is that they help in your risk appetite by validating the organization's risk appetite in the tolerance levels then your kris can help in your identification of risk by providing an objective mechanism for for uh, for risk identification itself and then they can provide a trigger for investigating an event and providing a corrective action if the risk levels have crossed their uh, risk thresholds or or if they are uh, closer to being uh, you know to, to being reached then it helps you in establishing a risk culture by focusing on on most important and relevant areas and then uh, the last uh, thing is that they also help you in the measurement and the reporting of your uh, risks by by providing a quantitative information related to the risk now the question that arises is that how do we select the kris so the first the, the fundamental principle that we need to keep in mind while we are selecting the kris is that the effectiveness of kris depends largely on the strength of their metrics your metrics determine how effective your kpis your your kris would be and we we also need to be able to differentiate between metrics and key indicators not every metric is a key indicator so and and these are some of the mistakes that are very commonly observed in the selection of kris and something that i have seen is that Uh, you know uh, oh, while creation of kris you know, uh, there, there is a huge tendency of populating a list of kris putting uh, you know putting forth uh, uh, a list of kris is very easy unless you determine a, determine a complete mechanism uh, of how you will collect and report those kris on a consistent basis so remember that you know that these kris are meant to be those key indicators which alert you when your risk thresholds are about to be reached or any risk based activity is likely to breach your risk appetite or your, your risk capacity so what is the first mistake that that is often seen is that the kris which are selected they are not linked to any specific risk or goals so you know there is a saying in even in the life that if you don't know where you are headed then every road takes you there so you need to know what your business objective is or what your uh, uh, what your goal is whatever kris you select they should be linked to your goals they should be directly related to your goal and alert you remember the purpose for creating the kris the the purpose is to make is to alert you whenever you will uh, whenever any risk event could occur that could affect your business objective or the end goal so uh, now the, once you have identified what your goal is and you have selected the kris that are linked to your goal the second mistake that is often seen is that the kris which are selected they are too difficult to measure aggregate or compare now, uh, you know anything that is left manually uh, that that is left uh, to human intervention or anything that is left uh, to be done manually then there is a strong likelihood that this particular manual process would get uh, you, you know would uh, get lagged after a certain point in time so the first thing is that you need to make sure that whatever kris you are selecting they need to be tied to your goal the second thing is that they should be easy to measure and aggregate and one thing that you need to also uh, keep in view is that first thing as i mentioned that anything that is left to the human intervention is is, is likely to be tampered with the passage of time and you may observe a, uh, you may observe a slack in and its uh, aggregation and measurement with the passage of time second thing is that while you are automating your processes to, in collection of your uh, in measuring and uh, collecting those uh, kris what you need to make sure is that uh, your uh, uh, you know that any process that you intend to automate make sure that it 
logical errors are initially removed and you only go and automate the processes for for collection and aggregation of the for, for measurement and aggregation of these KRIs once you are clear with the logic because if you begin with if, if you try and automate any process that is inefficient in 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 principle, uh, so what you what you do is that you enhance the inefficiency of the process. So you have to bear in mind these things before you go on to establish a mechanism for autom automatically uh, aggregating and measuring these uh, KRIs. The third thing is that the requirements for the KRIs are not clear. So uh, you are still not certain that how you, you know what your goals are, but what are the low level items that get mapped to your uh, to your end goal so if you are not clear uh, and if you don't know which metrics need to be collected you will not be able to, to translate them into kris so uh, it, it's a case of unclear specifications so the fourth is that you have results which cannot be compared over time so if you have a static value for a certain uh, you know for, for a certain kri does it add any value to you does it tell you something substantial it may not be the case so you need to have the trends and the patterns as well which tell you where you have been for the past six months or over a certain period of time so as we discussed that the effectiveness of kris depends on the strength of the metric so what is the criteria for for uh, metrics they have to be smart and what does it mean by by having smart metrics uh, specific measurable attainable relevant and timely specific again based on clearly understood goals so you need to understand what your goals are and see how your metrics are going to be mapped uh, are going to be translated into kris and how those kris are going to uh, be uh, mapped to your uh, goals and then they have to be measurable that it has to be a quantify it has to be quantitative in nature not uh, qualitative in nature so you should be able to measure those metrics the third thing is that whatever metrics you are selecting they should be realistic and you, uh, again they, they should be uh, based on important goals and values again that they should add uh, you know they, they should be easy to measure and uh, within a certain time frame then they should be relevant tied to a specific activity or goal and timely you, you, you should be able to connect them in a timely manner so these are the areas that you need to keep in view while you are establish while you are selecting your metrics because these metrics will then be fed into your KRIs. The other factors that are important for your for your uh, metrics is is that you need to establish a balance. Your your uh, risk indicators should be balanced, and how they they can be balanced, they, they, you need to have some kind of lag indicators, and and some of them need to be lead indicators. So lag indicators would indicate the risk after the events have occurred. So that if an event has already occurred, and you want to understand the lessons learned out of it, so you can go back and drill down and and, and identify what were the root causes, and if uh, we can have some preventive mechanisms in place to uh, you know to prevent from this kind of risk to materialize again then you need to have your lead indicators which will uh, which can be uh, uh, you know which support you in indicating uh, which controls are in place to prevent the events from occurring so that you, you get to know earlier uh, uh, before earlier the, the, or you can say that from from where you can identify that okay this risk is about to be materialized and this uh, risk demands action right now so you should be aware before any materialization of risk so again you see there there has to be a balance between a lag indicator and a lead indicator then you need to have uh, metrics that uh, demonstrate some kind of a trend so analyzing indicators over time you know uh, help you in gaining more insight it helps you what is the normal value for a particular metric so what, what is the fluctuation point and what are the variances in the in, the, in these in, in a particular metric the other thing is that the root cause so once you select your metrics your metrics should drill down to the root cause of the events and not just the symptoms because if you again you know and this is a common life phenomena also is that if you are only working to resolve the symptoms and not the root cause 
what you may be doing is that you may be patching uh, uh, patching the symptoms as well you, you may be working on to suppress the symptoms but if you suppress one system uh, one symptom another symptom would appear because the root cause has still not been fixed so these are the areas that demand attention while you are selecting your kris uh, how kris help the organizations they do it by providing an early warning uh, by having a forward looking approach so that you know any high risk which is emerging uh, can be dealt by the management and you can take a proactive action before the risk uh, gets translated into a loss then you can have a backward looking view as well so that you can view the risk events that have occurred previously and uh, you can enable your risk responses and you can help the management to uh, look upon the possible improvement, uh, uh, you know, options. Then KRIs can also help you perform an analysis of trends. Then they, they, they provide an indication of the enterprise uh, risk appetite and tolerance. This can be through your uh, through your metric settings or through your KRI thresholds. Now, now we have seen how KRIs have to be selected. Uh, what are the usual mistakes? The KRI effectiveness depends on uh, the uh, on, on having smart metrics and what smart metrics actually means. Now, all these metrics would get translated into KRI. So we need to check okay which KRIs would be most effective because if you have let's say a list of ten KRIs, does the management need to see all those KRIs every month? Not necessarily. So you may have. Uh, executive KRIs as well. So what are the uh, considerations that need to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, what are the areas that need to be considered uh, to, uh, to determine the effectiveness of uh, KRIs? The first thing, so there, there, there are five factors. First thing is the impact. So any indicator that is going to tell you about high business impact, that has a higher likelihood of being selected as a KRI. The second thing is the effort. If you recall from our previous discussion in the mistakes, so this is more of a replication of the same thing, but over there we were discussing about the mistakes. Here we are just translating them into effectiveness. It's essentially the same idea. So the second thing that you need to keep in mind while determining the effectiveness is the effort. So. If, let's say if you have different indicators which provide you same piece of information, if, if you have different indicators which, you, which are equally sensitive in communicating to you about a certain risk event, so the one which is easier to measure and maintain over a period of time, uh, that should be preferred and used in the measurement and aggregation. The other thing is, uh, reliability so any indicators that you select they should be uh, having a high correlation with the risk and uh, should be reliable enough to predict uh, any risk events then you have sensitivity again so your whatever indicators you select you they should be sensitive enough to to establish uh, that okay a certain risk event is about to be materialized the other thing is repeatable. So again, if you recall from our previous discussion of mistakes while selecting the KRIs, this was one of the issues that uh, they, they did not necessarily communicate or trend. So having a KRI that is repeatable helps you to measure the KRIs on a regular basis and it helps you to show trends and patterns in an activity. So these are some of the areas that, that help you determine the effectiveness of the KRIs. But what happens is that uh, once you have selected the KRIs, you may need to have a look at those KRIs or, or you may need to optimize those KRIs with the passage of time as well. Maybe you, you had a thorough look at all these uh, areas that we have discussed so far. You had a fair bit of balance between your, you, you, you selected the smart metrics you address all the possible mistakes that are usually made in the selection of KRIs, yet you may need to optimize the KRIs with the passage of time. So why do they need to be optimized? So the, the purpose is that you need to make sure that whatever you are reporting, that is accurate. 
the, the first thing is so, so in order to make sure that your reporting is accurate and meaningful you need to optimize your KRI so first thing is that you need to check that the data which you are collecting and the data on which you are reporting that is the correct data the second thing is that you need uh, that, that you need to make sure is that your KRI thresholds are set correctly so if you have incorrect thresholds what will happen is that either you will be uh, attending to a certain risk either too late or way too earlier so you need to so th these are the two things you need to make sure that the data which you are collecting is correct and you are uh, getting alerted at the correct time so and to get alerted at the correct time you need to make sure that your KRI thresholds are correct so uh, you don't want to uh, either you know act either too late or too early so when you are optimizing your KRIs these are some of the metrics that you need to keep in view first thing is the sensitivity so let's say if you were collecting the metrics which were translating which were getting translated into the KRIs and uh, if the, the uh, metrics that uh, so let's say if you were uh, collecting the logs uh, the, the minor major or the critical uh, severity levels logs so now you realize that this KRI is uh, is not uh, should not be getting the data from uh, any sensor for, for, for any log level which which is which has a minor uh, severity rating so what you can do is that you can alter the, the, the sensitivity to collect only the logs which have major or critical category so these only these logs can be fed into your KRI so what you are doing by uh, through this is that you are altering the sensitivity of your KRIs the second thing is the timing so this involves you know uh, the selection of metrics only for a given time frame so let's say if you are selecting the metrics if, if you are collecting the logs at midnight but that risk event is not supposed to materialize at midnight it is supposed to midnight, uh, you know materialize at 5 a.m in the morning so if you need to tune your your time period that is also uh, that is related to your uh, timing aspect the other thing can be the frequency so let's say if you're selecting if you're collecting the logs which are supposed to be fed into some kind of KRIs so again if, if you are collecting them after every three hours but you realize that the frequency is much more you need to reduce the frequency interval you need to reduce the interval so what you are doing is that you are altering the frequency of your KRIs or any other corrective action that may, may require in this case okay the other thing is uh, so once you do this you have to maintain your KRIs as well with the passage of time uh, so the, the the set of KRIs need to be you know evaluated on a regular basis to verify that these KRIs are properly related to your risk appetite and the tolerance level and so that these KRI trigger levels uh, you know are also defined to enable the stakeholder to take appropriate action in a timely manner so uh, in this case what are the considerations towards uh, KRI maintenance so first thing you, that you need to make sure is that your KRIs are tied to your appetite uh, to your risk appetite and to your risk tolerance the second thing is that your KRI trigger levels allow action in timely manner and the third consideration is that you also need to check which KRIs need to be replaced so any KRIs that are no longer related to the risk appetite or the tolerance level they need to be replaced while any uh, of those KRIs whose trigger levels are found to be uh, out of alignment with the requirements of the organization they need to be optimized now we come to kpis now as discussed earlier we, we need indicators which are tied to certain goals and uh, the indicators which tell us uh, how well we are performing to reach uh, the goals that we have set for ourselves as an organization take the example of uh, serious examination uh, you know if less than a couple of weeks are left in the exam and if i still have more than three domains left to be covered then it can tell me where i am in regards to my goals so 
the KPIs help you in, in measuring how well your, your processes are performing in reaching your goal and uh, they help you predict whether a goal will be reached in a particular time period or not. So let's say I'll give you an example. So if, if uh, in project management, you have a, a project deadline, you have to complete a project with a certain deadline and for that project, you have certain deliverables. So as you continue to deliver those deliverables, you get to find, you, you, it is it becomes easier for you to predict how well you are performing and whether your pro your project would be completed in in the estimated time or not. And then it helps you in identifying uh, whether the business require any additional resources or or, or, uh, or any further attention. And you know, uh, as for this uh, additional resources, take take the example of a project that is meant to be completed in two months time uh, let's assume and the human resource that is available is already overburdened but they are still lagging behind their projected target date so a kpi can help the management to determine the level of resources that are required uh, the other thing is that it can be used to set the benchmark for risk management goals and monitor whether those goals are being attained or not so one uh, good example that was also given in the book was that let's say if you have a patching mechanism in, in place and if you have a goal of patching a certain vulnerability in 20 days but if it takes more than 20 days to patch a batch uh, the vulnerability so it tells you how well you are performing how well your patch management process is performing and if as you are not uh, either adhering to those uh, target dates or for, for some reasons for some valid reason you are not able to uh, achieve the, 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 the performance levels that, that are uh, required what happens is that the corresponding risk levels also begin to increase so KPIs and KRIs can also be used simultaneously because let's say if you are not performing at a level that is desired, your risk levels begin to increase as well. Uh, while you're selecting your KPIs, again, the effectiveness of your KPIs, just like KRIs, is dependent on the smart metrics. So I won't go in, the, in, explain, in explaining what smart metrics are. That is already explained earlier. And that holds true even for KPIs as well. Just like KRIs, your KPIs are also uh, supposed to be valuable to your business and tied to a particular business function or a service as I gave you an example First you need to understand what your goals are and see how well you are performing in regards to those uh, in regards to, to that goal and then your KPIs also need to be quantitatively measured Now these are some of the concepts over here related to KRIs, KPIs, KCIs and KBIs I I wonder if the exam would test you too much on this, but uh, especially for KCIs and KBIs. But you need to have a fair bit of an idea, a fair bit of idea on this. Uh, what are the KRIs? KRIs KRI provide an early warning of increased risk within the organization, and uh, KPIs provide you information on performance aspects of the organization, how well you are performing in regards to the goals. Your KCIs are your key control objectives. So if you recall our discussion from previous domain where we had selected a particular risk response, those risk responses were selected based on the risk assessment that was done in the risk assessment phase. Once we selected a risk response, then we developed an action plan and an implementation strategy. In that, we selected the controls. The controls were either administrative, technical, or physical. So all these controls would have a certain objective so you need to see that how effective your controls are in uh, in associate uh, you know in in preventing those risks or or in treating those risks so uh, uh, one, one example that i can give over here is that let's say if you uh, for, for your perimeter defenses you brought in a firewall okay to be installed at your perimeter so uh, what, what is the key key objective of this control is to make sure that no unauthorized traffic gets in so 
your KCI should tell you how effective your control is in treating this risk, how effective your control is. So the purpose of having your, those firewalls is not to just stay up and running. The purpose is, the key control objective is to make sure that no unauthorized traffic gets in. So how effective this firewall is in preventing any kind of incoming traffic uh, into, your, uh, into your network? Then you have your KBIs, which are the key business objectives, and they, they ensure that your business goals are being achieved. So just be familiar with this. Uh, I, I wonder if KCIs and KBIs would be extensively tested during the exam, but uh, it's uh, better to know about these things as well. Yeah, and when a key performance indicator needs attention, so see, KPIs are the lead indicators which are meant to provide insight into whether associated goals will be reached with uh, sufficient advance notice so that a corrective action can be taken if there is a problem. Therefore, whenever a KPI moves outside of a threshold, which is based on the uh, uh, upper and the lower boundary, the threshold has an upper and a lower boundary and it has a degree of variance in it as well. So whenever it moves outside of a threshold, it means that this process requires attention why this process is not performing according to its expected performance levels. So now comes the part for monitoring of controls. So CS says that monitoring controls is a process that has six steps. Now I would say that this is not a silver bullet. This is not something that you need to memorize, but just get familiar with the concept. If you're fair, if you're familiar with the concept, you would, you would do well in uh, mapping this uh, concept during the exam questions that you may come across. So the first thing that you need to do is while you are monitoring the controls is that you need to identify the risk control owners and the stakeholders. Who are the risk control owners and the stakeholders? And then you engage them to communicate the risk and what are the information security requirements and what are the purpose purposes of uh, monitoring and reporting both. The third thing is that you continuously maintain a monitoring and evaluation approach and this approach has to be in line with your global uh, approach within the organization or within your IT uh, uh, management. Then you establish a monitoring procedure or a process. Then you agree on a life cycle management or the change control process for monitoring and reporting. So, uh, uh, you know, an example that I can give over here is so, you know, for, for change control process. So again, going back to the example for a firewall. So you brought in your firewall to secure your perimeter defenses. So let's say if you have to upgrade a firewall, uh, a software version of, of your firewall. So uh, what happens is that, uh, so this change will have to be made during a certain time period. So you need to make sure that whatever changes that you are making, they, your, your change management practices are in line with your organization's change management practices. And during this time period, uh, how will the reporting and monitoring will be carried out. So you also need to, so your monitoring and your reporting mechanism needs to inform the actual risk owners that an upgrade is underway because you see the purpose of the firewall was not just to stay up and running. It was brought in place to secure your, your, your defense mechanisms. So if your firewall is down for uh, uh, you know more than expected time period or if it is not or if there's no uh, alternate mechanism to secure your your defenses what what happens is that your risk levels will again get uh, elevated and the sixth thing is that you request prioritize and allocate resources for your monitoring whether it is in the form of a, of establishing in establishing a team which will be performing the monitoring or reporting or assigning this task to to some other team so the thing uh, what is important over here is that you have to be familiar with the concept the, not necessarily you don't have to memorize this or uh, remember this by heart just a second now you have uh, seen what are the objectives of risk reporting, what are KRIs, what are the issues in selecting the KRIs, what are the KPIs, 
uh, how they need to be selected. Then we have discussed uh, uh, the monitoring procedure. Then comes the part for control assessment types. Now, when you are assessing your control, so you are again, if you remember, I have been uh, saying this again and again. You you need to make sure that your controls, which were brought in place, to treat a certain risk. Their purpose is not necessarily just to stay up and running. Their, their purpose is to reduce the risk levels uh, within the risk appetite or whatever the, the desired risk levels are. So while you are performing the control monitoring, you need to make sure that uh, your the, the data that is being uh, uh, on which you are going to report. For first, whatever you are monitoring and you are reporting upon, your it will be done on a certain data set so this data set has to be accurate and it has to be complete so uh, let's say if you are reporting or monitoring uh, uh, a particular horizon if you are not looking at the complete set of data what you are doing is that you are uh, missing out on a certain horizon maybe you are uh, just observing a 70 percent angle of of the entire risk uh, spectrum but you are not uh, looking at 30% of the risk spectrum. So you may be looking at the 70% of the accurate data, but if it if you are uh, blinded to the entire risk spectrum is then what happens is that your data set is not complete and you are not familiar how effective your control is. So uh, some of the mechanisms that are usually adopted to perform the assessment of the controls are information security audits, Either uh, the vulnerability assessment that is done, your penetration testing, and sometimes you do it through the third party assurance as well. Now, this brings us to the last topic for today's session, which is uh, what is a risk profile. Now, after you have gone through all these four phases that we had discussed throughout uh, our series uh, uh, course, what you get at the end is a risk profile and your risk profile is based on the overall risk posture of the organization and how attentive your organization is in monitoring effectiveness of controls not just the controls effectiveness of the controls because remember these controls were tied to a certain risk and these controls are meant to treat the risk to a desired risk levels then the third thing is that how your uh, organization is identifying it and addressing and preventing those risks and how your risk culture is evolving with the passage of time so these are all the areas that get translated into the risk profile so that brings us to the conclusion of the session uh, and uh, i would like to extend my best wishes for all those of you who are planning to take this exam i hope that uh, this session and the entire course that was conducted from this platform was beneficial for all of you uh if you have any questions i'll unmute you right now and you can ask questions from me uh however you know uh i do get this uh, this feedback from a lot of people that this is quite boring and at times quite theoretical it's just that you have to relate uh th these concepts with your daily life and with your surroundings as well yes this is a dry subject uh, and you know, uh, I contest this concept too. That this is dry subject. It's just about that. You have to start relating it with, within your uh, horizon and see what about, how these concepts get mapped into your daily life and in your workplace. So once you start doing that, it becomes easier. But if you just again, you no, know, and this is not just uh, don't don't take it just as a course for for passing the exam. Take it as a concept to adopt in your daily life as well. Once you start doing it, all these concepts will become uh, easy to absorb. So I'll, leave, I'll finish over here and uh, I'll try and take the questions if any one of you has any question. You can unmute yourself and then ask questions if there are any. Um, is, is there any framework for um um for this particular thing or any benchmark that whether whatever you're doing is really meeting the requirement for the business 
you know there, there are frameworks there are always frameworks you have uh, your iso 27005 risk framework as well but again it depends what, what is the framework that is required to be adopted it is often driven by the organization's need or often there are some uh, regulatory uh, compulsions uh, so let's say you can have some regulatory compulsion that requires you to adhere to a certain risk framework so it depends i mean but it is at the behest of the organization itself yes there are it risk frameworks as well isaka itself has its it risk framework that you can go and find on their website as well like the templates for like in order to do the kri the kpis and then uh, need to just um, make sure that you know again uh, you know your, your kri would be your, your kris or your kpis whatever you select they would be tied to a certain business goal right so first you need to understand what, what the business goals are and see what will be the factors that will affect those the, uh, in in achieving that goal so let's say if i i'll give you an example if i am involved in a particular project okay if i have to deliver a particular project uh, uh, let's say if, if if i am constructing a house okay so this uh, this itself is a project so this project would have certain deliverables each deliverable would have certain timeline so one of the deliverable could be getting the electricity connection done for the entire uh, building correct so this is one deliverable this deliverable would have certain timeline you would expect that all the connectivity of the electricity would be done let's say in one month time so this is the deadline that you have set for yourself and within this deliverable you will also uh, you know drill it down to the factors that okay what will be the tasks that you will do on a weekly basis because the 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 grand deadline that you have set for this for this deliverable is one month so you would also have the task like okay what will you do every week so if you are not able to achieve those tasks uh, your your weekly task it tells you how you are performing on uh, in regards to your expected kps and if you are, if your expected kps are not being reached what has happened is, uh, is that your risk levels are being increased now coming back to your question there is no fixed template you, will, you won't find a fixed template and i'll suggest you is that don't you can refer to template just to take the plot based guidelines but don't uh, pick up something and start implementing this within your organization because this will never be helpful just you will always have to tweak things according to your own requirements but you again once you understand the the broader concept of the kpis and the kris it becomes easier to implement it and you know uh, i can tell you from a personal experience as well that uh, i've seen people uh, you know uh, draw or, or put up a, a long list of kpis and kris but once you know having a list populated of kris and kpis is very easy but the real challenge is that if you will be able to consistently aggregate and measure them and report them and what happens is that let's say if you are having 20 kpis but they are not necessarily valuable to the organization what you're doing is that you are wasting the human energy and you you are wasting your own resources a lot so therefore you need to understand that why the kpis are needed and how they are impacted to your goals 